Natasha. Debbie. Show. The show. <laughs> Welcome to it. <laughs> Just two patriotic girls. Learning about the world. So please, don't take us the wrong way. Hello again, sexy Swedes. I'm just going to look at you while Debbie says stuff. Welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. Ooh. And if you like today's episode, please consider subscribing to our channel and also tap that like button. Mm -hmm. Sexy Swedes. You are very sexy. Sorry. I'm still looking at him. <laughs> that one guy should really close his robe though. Ooh. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> We're excited about today's episode, um, and uh, you know we look at a lot of different aspects when we're checking out and learning about other countries. We sure do. We like to take a look at the cities, landscaping, geography, and mm -hmm. we like to look at the culture. We like to taste your food. <laughs> Definitely the food. Mm -hmm. That's the best part. And today we want to see something else. So um, this video popped up, and it sounds like something that could be really really impressive. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it sounds like something Sweden's doing that the rest of the world maybe should possibly peek into and look at, mm -hmm. or even more than that. This is called what, hon? This is called How Sweden is Turning Its Waste Into Gold. Okay, so we are really big on recycling and doing our part to help the planet. Mm -hmm. And um, so we saw this video, we're like, what's that about? And that sounds fantastic and interesting. So the, the other interesting part of this is it's it looks like it's on a, Fran a French news station. So don't know. But still, it just sounds like, what's going on here? So, mm -hmm. Sweden, do you know something we don't know, and can we learn from you? Not just us, but the rest of the world. Exactly. So what exactly is going on over there? We need to find this out. We mm -hmm. want to find this out. And uh, we're going to do that, hopefully with you, right now. It's time now for our focus report. And this Friday, we're talking about recycling. When it comes to waste management and environmental awareness, Sweden is the world's heavyweight champion. Uh, okay. The country Didn't recycles know that. nearly all its waste and in the process also all generates it? electricity and heating. Well, France 2's what? Claire Colnet has this report, voiced by Nicholas Rushworth. Sweden. Hold on, what did she just say? Champion. The country recycles nearly all its waste and in the process also generates electricity and heating. What? That is Why don't incredible. Know about this? I think it t one of the videos we watched touched just a smidge on oh, that. Oh, I missed that part somehow. Um, I don't know how. That, yeah, that they have very, very little waste, but I didn't know that they were... Turning doing, into heating Yeah, and, recycling and using it. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Okay, Sweden. Well, France 2's Claire Colnet has this report, voiced by Nicholas Rushworth. Sweden has turned its waste into gold. We're doing good business, and at the same time, we feel good about it because we're helping protect the environment. Out of the 4.4 million tons of Swedish waste each year, just 1% is dumped in landfill. Wow. How do the Swedes manage to do that? How, How do They are so far ahead of other European countries in the recycling business. <laughs> Not just European. This right. shopping center, 100 kilometers from Stockholm, looks no different to any other crockery and glassware, furniture, electrical goods mm -hmm. offer sale. Okay. But all the items are in fact being recycled in a unique project. These computers, for example, are being repaired one by one for resale. Okay. And here you go, it's working again. Oh, then DVD. Okay, and here comes a DVD player, and it also has a VHS tape player and recorder. I think we have one of those in the basement. And is it working? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, it works. I'm moving house, so there are many things that I won't be bringing along with me. That's how this treasure here turned up. Yes, and someone else can use them, and that's a good thing. A whole culture of recycling has sprung up. Okay, in so Sweden. we do do that here, and I think a lot of countries do that. You know, you just donate it to some places. And, right. Um, <clears throat> one of the places I love the most that we do those things with, and I'm sure this is in a lot of other places, is for dog rescues and dog shelters. You know, the mm -hmm. money goes to them. Yeah. You can buy here reused stuff, but. Um, I'm still very intrigued in this. It's a good thing. A whole culture of recycling has sprung up in Sweden. This Frenchman, Jan, has been living in the country for 12 years and has adapted. He pays special care to sort all his kitchen waste. Hmm. Take this banana peel, for instance. It goes here, the special bag for organic waste. Nice. 
The city of Stockholm supplies rubbish bags free of charge. The main rule is to okay. separate the waste properly. This here is the bag for all the plastic waste. And I put the rest in here. Paper, magazines, glass and metal bottles. I love that the city provides those for free. We don't have that. Yeah, I, I think that's might be an important part of it is yeah. providing the bags and the ways to do it, making it easy for people to do it. And self-responsibility to actually take the time to do it. Exactly. There's so few people that I know that would do that. Mm -hmm. and I mean, I, I don't know an American who doesn't recycle personally. I'm not saying that they, they all do. Right. There's no way they all do. <laughs> but we, you know, we recycle, we separate things out. But, um, but not to this extent. No. There that's... are plenty. I, I think there's, there's a few people I know that I've been in their home and they, they do have everything separated out. Mm -hmm. But that's not the average person. Mm -hmm. And so that's awesome. And the fact that the city, again, they give you that. That's huge. Yes. They care enough to want to help out. Mm -hmm. Now, this video is six years old. So let us know in the comments if anything's changed. I'm mm -hmm. sure there's been things probably added. But I'm finding this already fascinating. Consumers make a trip to a recycling center on average twice a week. Well, we don't have there's that. There's one nearby in oh. every district. Each wow. with seven recycling bins. Do we have that? No. What we do for the environment just becomes part of the routine, and that is a source of satisfaction. Each person has their own role to play in environmental protection. Mm -hmm. Swedish people bring in around 480 kilograms of waste per person per year. Wow. Half of it, metal, plastic, glass, goes directly for recycling. The other half also gets a second life. Anything that cannot be recycled is transported to power generation plants. What? From household rubbish to used packaging in all, 750,000 tons of waste is treated each year. Jeez. Huge pincers drop waste into incinerators that turn it into energy. That's so cool. That is nice. We have electricity producing turbines, and in the process we also generate heat which is made available to Stockholm residents. 100,000 people get heating that way, and 200,000 people benefit from the electricity we generate. The power generation causes hardly any pollution. Authorities say CO2 emissions are two times lower than the limits allow. Really? The system works so well that to keep incinerators working flat out, Sweden treats waste from other countries. 10% <gasps> of... That's huge. What? <laughs> That's incredible. I am so impressed right now. And so like, hey, Sweden, very good. I would so be on board with this. Yeah, I want this here. Um, like seeing all the recycle bins there that you just take your stuff to and drop it off. Yeah. There's nothing around here. I mean, if it were here, we would gladly do it. Yeah, I'm sure in some places like California and different places like that, they have that. It's right. more some common to find. Some of the bigger cities, maybe. Yeah. Um, here, no. Um, now, our city gives us this giant trash bin thing on wheels mm -hmm. that's for recycling only. And you put all of your stuff in there, and then they separate They it. separate it, but do they? Right. <laughs> so Debbie and I tend to separate a lot of it ourselves, too, mm -hmm. because do they? <laughs> exactly. Uh, I'm going to just rewind that back for a minute, because what's... That's the huge. fact that that doesn't even give off any, like, CO2. Well, uh -huh. it does, but very minimum uh -huh. to nothing. Again... That's surprising. And then what was I about to say here about other countries? Let's yeah, well, just find out. other countries' waste. Yeah, let's hear this part. This is impressive. Two emissions are two times lower than the limits allow. The system works so well that to keep incinerators working flat out, Sweden treats waste from other countries. 10% of the waste our company treats here is, in general, imported. From where? Where do they um, come from? Mostly from the United Kingdom. Mm. Sweden... Did you know that, UK? probably did if you didn't sorry or if you did sorry if you didn't you're welcome <laughs> <laughs> um huh Man, that, that's incredible i love it when when things come together uh -huh. you know that's just awesome it's i wish great. you could take ours <laughs> but right. that's a lot 10 percent of it comes from the uk mm -hmm. that's fascinating and so cool and then turn it into energy that's, that's amazing. amazing okay where do they come from mostly from the united kingdom Sweden imported 1.4 million tons of waste in 2016. Waste exporting countries paid 36 euros per ton, wow. bringing in more than 50 million euros. Wow. We see waste as a commodity, a product one can sell or buy, just like other forms of energy. Waste mm. is an efficient source of energy. Did you hear that? 
I mean, that's amazing. I've never thought that way. I know. Taking waste and turning it into energy. That, that's brilliant. It it's, is a commodity. He's right, though. I mean, he's absolutely right. Is. I just never thought of it that way. It's freaking genius, Sweden. Mm -hmm. I wonder if any other countries do this. Like I said, this, this is a six-year-old video. So I wonder if other places have gone on board doing this. Mm -hmm. This is awesome. Well, or buy, just like other forms of energy. Waste is an efficient source of energy, and it's also a very good way to reduce our environmental impact. Agreed. Definitely. Sweden wants to go further. It hopes to reuse 100% of its waste within three years and have no landfill sites. Did that happen? Mm. Let us know. Well, for more on this, I'm joined in the studio by our guest, Flor Bellingen, is director of Zero Waste France. Hello, thank you very much Hi. for being with us. How long has it taken Sweden to get to this stage first? Well, it's a pretty long story. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it started in the 70s uh, with oh, the really? first uh, ambitious uh, recycling programs. But it's, in some other countries, um, progress is, is quicker. For example, in Italy, we have some regions in who are improving very fast. Like okay. in two, three years, they can like reverse their statistics, which is pretty interesting for us. That's inspiring, absolutely. Mm. Now, it's not all rosy, or perhaps I should say green uh, for Sweden. For instance, oh, okay. your organization rejects the idea that uh, burning waste counts as recycling. Why? Yes. Uh, well, hmm. it's pretty simple. It uh, burning waste um, is just destroying material uh, yeah. versus recycling. Um, oh, I see. Its goal is to uh, reuse material and re reuse resources. So uh, we cannot consider burning waste. Yeah, but they already said that was the waste they were burning was stuff that couldn't be recycled. Right. Did they not say that? I thought they Pretty did. Pretty sure that's what I heard. And even so, it's something that's not going into landfills. Uh huh. So and then you're turning it into energy. So right. You are that is recycling. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly as a, a form of circular economy, which is um, the idea that you, you should be in a cycle. But isn't uh, it creating energy? Yeah, well, recovering heat um, is the least you could do uh, when you decide mm -hmm. to burn waste. Uh, and also the problem with Sweden, um, as mentioned in the video report, is that they need to import waste from other countries so that the, the, the incineration plants are not uh, empty. Uh, it means that waste travels thousands of kilometers uh, to be burned in another country, which is not exactly what environmental standards today yeah. uh, should uh, lead to. Just my personal opinion, I don't like to win political topics, and this is a political topic no matter mm -hmm. what anyone says. I think that's incredibly nitpicky, what she's saying. Mm -hmm. I think it's very nitpicky. I know what she means. Yeah, and I get that, of course. I think it's just nitpicky, you mm -hmm. know, it's still helping. It's still beneficial, it and it, I think it's just, yeah. Could it be 100%? I don't know. I mean, there's there are products that are produced and things that are there that you can't recycle into something else. Right. It's going to have to be destroyed, right. melted down, and turned into Well, you, you can't expect else. one country to do 100% of the work and then just be like, okay, now here's a problem we have with mm. that and that and that. You know, it's more like, look at the positive here. So this is a way, perhaps, of, of not recycling as much as they could? Yeah, well, uh, in Sweden, um, the, the recycling has not really improved in the last 10 years. Uh, and maybe incineration is the one reason for that. Um, whereas in Italy, as I, I was saying, um, we have seen great progress. And some regions in Italy are um, really um, have performances that are really higher than Sweden, like 70 or 80 percent of recycling today. Uh, so it shows that it's absolutely possible. And I think that if uh, Sweden was not so much involved in, in incineration, they could reach easily those standards. And what about here in France? What's the situation here? Well, in France, we are um, not as advanced um, in general. I mean, we are probably regarding recycling, we are about 40 percent um but we are also improving and we we will be improving in the, the next few years also thanks to um composting because this is something that really makes a difference uh, because this is 30 percent of our um, garbage and if we take it out and we um, compost it, for example, um, of course, it reduces the amount of waste that needs to be incinerated or landfilled. We do a lot of composting here. That demands here. A, a general effort, but also an individual effort. How hard is it to change mm. mentalities on that kind That's of thing? That's my point. Well, um, I think that, um, ex especially for compost, uh, it's not so difficult because uh, it seems natural. 
uh, it's a natural cycle composting and and this is something mm. that people really understand but in small mm -hmm. city flats it's not the easiest thing to organize is it of course but you have many different solutions uh you have home compost i'm just gonna pause for a minute one more time sorry but <laughs> look as she's like well sweden could do better right mm -hmm. and they haven't really changed in 10 years but then on there and like they said earlier sweden's <laughs> recycling rate nears 100 percent it's pretty close. I mean, I mean come it, on. It's very high. So in other words, if, if Sweden hasn't changed in the last 10 years, you've been at 100% for a long time. You can't get better than that. <laughs> You're doing very well. I'm just saying, I just think that she's kind of like nitpicking on certain things that... Mm -hmm. Uh, it's kind of annoying to me. Sting, of course, uh, and it's easier, of course, if you have a garden, uh, but it could also be uh, done in, in apartments. But you also have uh, community composting and you also yeah, composting have separate can do. collection of mm -hmm. organics. And, and this can happen in a big city such as Paris. And you, saw, you talk about collective organization. Is there a political will to improve? I think so. Uh, it's slowly uh, starting. Um, for example, in Paris, uh, the, the municipality decided to, um, to start as a separate collection of organics. Uh, so it's for, for the moment, it's only in a, in a part of the city, but it's going to, uh, to improve and to, um, to be extended to the whole city. And looking more widely, there's clearly a good and positive financial impact uh, in, in going green. Why, on an issue like this, um, is it so hard to get nations on board? Well, um, I think because, uh, of course, it's a, it's a lot of uh, work and the transition is not easy. Uh, so that's... Um, mm. that okay, I'm not saying she's wrong. But with Sweden's um, cities and stuff, giving, at least Stockholm, they said, right? Mm -hmm. Giving the free, free bags and things for things like that, for people to do the work, yeah. that makes it easy. The countries, the municipalities, everything has to be willing to spend that money to put it forward and then have the plants and everything. Yeah. But so once you it, give people the yeah. opportunity to do these things, they're I more likely they to actually do them. <laughs> I think they definitely jump on board if it's there and it's yeah. accessible to them. Absolutely. Yeah. People will jump on. That makes it a bit difficult for, especially for local politicians uh, who have to handle uh, a lot of different um, aspects of uh, environmental issues. Uh, but in the long term, uh, they know that uh, it's it's a, it's a good thing for uh, also for the budget of the mm. municipalities. And mm -hmm. since the, they are currently under a great financial stress, I think uh, it will be a, a, a stronger though, motivation in, in the next few years. So how does your organization Zero Waste France help this? Well, uh, we, we advocate for zero waste strategies at the local level and we try to help um, local politicians through uh, sharing examples of what is actually working already in some other countries or some other regions. And what's working here in France? Is something to be proud of here? Yes, of course. <laughs> uh, for example, we have um, um, great cases of uh, organic collections um, um, in cities such as Lorient. Uh, it's been going on for years and it works very well. Mm -hmm. And the compost uh, can be used in, um, in some uh, farming, organic farming, mm -hmm. uh, which, is, uh, which is also uh, a, good, uh, a good thing for uh, other environmental issues, uh, not only for waste. I'm not going to compost a VCR though. Thank you having spoken to us. Thank you. I love that. I didn't know any of that. Um, could have done with a little less at the end. Yeah, a little less of that uh, interview part at the end. But yeah, I, it was very fascinating video. Yeah. And it's great to find out that Sweden is so close to... Leading the way, yeah. literally, right? Absolutely leading the way. That's how I see it. Um, we have a lot to learn from you. And uh, man, yeah, there's so many facts there. But there, it was too short of a video. Mm -hmm. Like I was saying, it's too short. I would have liked to learn even more. Again, that video is six years old. I, I couldn't find anything... Um, newer, exactly. Um, but I, I didn't look that much either. I'm not gonna lie to you. Mm -hmm. I personally want to know your thoughts in the comments about the incineration. Everyone, anyone watching this video, I think there's nothing wrong with that. I heard what mm -hmm. she said. I get her point. But again, <laughs> I, I think it definitely counts as it's recycling in energy into heating and things like that. Mm -hmm. like, like she said, that's the least you can do. And I'm like, well, actually, the least you can do is nothing. There are countries and places that do nothing. So exactly. it's not the least you can do. I think it's impressive and awesome and cool and I love it. Learning from stuff like this makes me more gung-ho into wanting to go and do more. Absolutely. Even than we already do and tell more people about it and sharing it. Mm -hmm. So um, Sweden, thank you.
Seriously, thank you. That's awesome. And again, let us know what's changed in these six years. Um, yeah, if anything has changed, please mm -hmm. let us know. I know we are going to step up our recycling yeah. game. I don't think we can, Debbie. Can we really step up our recycling game? We're, we, you There's and I are, not much, but hey, you know. I'm going to look for anything I can. True. <laughs> um, again, guys, let us know what you thought of the video. Please hit that like button if you enjoyed this, you learned something new, and you also agree that this is awesome. We all need to do more. It's a very impressive. And consider subscribing to the channel. Um, we appreciate you, and um, let's have a nice, healthy conversation in the comments and, and kind conversation yes. in the comments. But thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next episode of the Natasha and Debbie Show. Until then, please love like Jess. Be as strong as Tyson. Bye-bye.